guys and welcome back to my ultimate zodiac showdown series so we have done the water signs the earth signs and the fire signs in the series so far they've all been completed so if you haven't seen any of those videos yet then please be sure to check those out but now we are moving on to the air signs yes so in today's video we're going to be looking at aquarius versus gemini I'm going to be discussing the core differences between these two signs followed by the compatibility whenever they are in a relationship. So looking at love, looking at sex and looking at anger. Also feel free to comment down below the key differences that you notice between these signs and also let me know of any experiences that you've had with either of them as well. Now Aquarius and Gemini are both air signs. So here we have the element of air. The very substance that we breathe through our lungs so that we can really live on this planet. It's the element of air, in fact, that is the least tangible out of all the elements. Air? Where is it exactly? Do we see air? Do we physically see it with the naked eye? Sure, you can see the effects of air, you know, whenever the wind is going against a tree and you can see the tree just going way back, bending over, but you can't physically see it. Furthermore, with the element of air, it's the only element within the elements that doesn't have an animal representing it. And this really suggests that it's the element of air that represents man, because it is man that has the ability to evaluate situations, to think about different values and concepts and morals. Therefore, it's the logic and the reasoning of man that um, that resulted in the naming of things, of explaining things, of being able to say to somebody else, well, can you meet me at 8am at the coffee shop across the street from the pharmacy? That's a lot of words for one instruction, isn't it? Therefore, it's the air signs that represent thought, they represent logic, reason and rationale. And air also is all about communication and communicating those very um, those very concepts and ideas and morals and values to other people. This is why the air signs are forever discussing new ideas and really bouncing them off one another. Also why air is a great deal to do with relationships because it's communication that really helps us to form relationships with other people. It's to do with all types and all forms of communicating resulting in us being able to relate to other people to say oh I really like this and have somebody else say oh my gosh I like that as well let's be best friends <laughs> but just like we can't physically see air we can't physically see thoughts either nor can we physically see words but you can see the effects of the thoughts and the words, just like we can see the effects of air. However, guys, when it does come to communicating and to explaining how we feel, feel to other people, well, that's when things get very interesting. <laughs> it's all well and good to sit with someone and have a mentally stimulating conversation about the new book that you've been reading, but thinking about how you feel. This can set the air sign's mind in a loop. Round and round they go. See, they want to be able to understand how they feel. So what they will do is they will think about why they think they think what they feel. Basically, they want to understand everything. There has to be some sort of explanation, some sort of thought out process of this is how I feel because X, Y, and Z, this is my understanding of it, right? I understand this, now I can sort of move on to the next thing. And this is also why so many air signs repress their emotions. They tend to repress their emotions because they think, well, I can't understand it. And what this does actually is this results in the air signs being a lot more sensitive <laughs> than they and other people may think. Ultimately guys, below the cool breezy wit and intellect is actually a person who possesses much emotional depth. An emotional depth that I personally think that water signs can really bring out of the air signs. So here we have the twins and the water bearer. 
the only two humans in this series coming head to head. Here we also have Mercury, the ruling planet of Gemini, and Uranus, the ruling planet of Aquarius, and Uranus is actually the higher octave of Mercury. Now some would suggest that these two are much more alike in comparison to Gemini and Libra, and Libra and Aquarius, and I can see that, you know, I can see that. Both are intelligent, both possess a quick wit, both are really quite bonkers. Um, I mean, with the sudden episodes of Aquarius due to Ur Uranus's, Uranus's? Uranus? Uranus rulership. <laughs> and also the going back and forth extremes for Gemini due to how Mercury is forever going retrograde. It's really quite difficult just to keep up with either of these two signs. But one huge difference here is the quality. So whilst Aquarius is a fixed sign, air sign, Gemini is a mutable air sign. Now Aquarius, they are more likely to stick to certain ideas and opinions that they do have, unless somebody, el somebody else comes along and presents the facts and the evidence to tell them otherwise. But at the same time, they are extremely open-minded and they are one of the most open-minded signs of the zodiac. But they will not accept a theory as a final truth until they have seen the visible facts. Now that doesn't mean that they aren't open-minded to the theories though. Aquarius actually really enjoys listening to other people's thoughts and opinions on things, but uh, again, doesn't mean that they agree <laughs> with them. Furthermore, Aquarius is associated with the cosmic language that is astrology and it's exactly why a part of Aquarius is in this sort of outer space uh, persona at all times. But Aquarius understands that astrology is not absolute truth, right? I'm an Aquarius sun and I pretty much made up 20% of Aquarius within my chart and whilst astrology fascinates me, you know, fascinates me. I don't think of it as an absolute truthful thing. I just see it as one piece of the puzzle to this wide range of possibilities within this universe. So yes, this is the Aquarius, a wonderful mix of both fantasy and fact. So many of them will contradict themselves because that's just it. That's just it. They are walking contradictions. All of them. All of them! Gemini, on the other hand, like I said, is a mutable air sign, so they are extremely changeable and they will change their minds, they will adopt new beliefs, they will go back and forth between their opinions, you know. Um, so because of this, they are, they're also likely to contra contradict themselves as well. But I think Aquarius is more aware of their ability to do this, whilst Gemini's, Gemini's are pretty oblivious to it. But one twin will say something as the other twin went into hiding, then the, the one that was in hiding will come out to play later and will say the complete opposite from what the other twin said. Um, it's not that they mean to do it, it's just that, hey, this is what I thought this day and then something happened and now I'm saying this and it's okay. We're allowed to change our minds, right? I know a guy with a Gemini moon and he would forever be like, you are allowed to change your mind, you do know that. Just because you say that you're going to do something doesn't mean you have to do it. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. So there's a, there's a difference there. Aquarius would be more prone to sort of sticking to, if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it because I'm fixed, I'm going to stick to it. Whereas with Gemini's, it's just straight up, well, I changed my mind, deal with it. I said I was going to do that thing and I'm not doing it anymore. I'm, I am I have free will, you know? No one's holding a gun to my head. I have the ability to change my mind anytime I want, thank you. For Gemini's as well, it's this whole sense of play. Um, they are a lot more playful in their character in comparison to Aquarius. They're, they're definitely a youthful bunch. Um, it's, it's really the Gemini's that are more, they're more likely to try new things for the sake of just curiosity, just sheer curiosity. In fact, that's how they learn. That's how they learn. But for Aquarius, it goes beyond just curiosity. They want to know, okay? They want to know, they want to know it all. Yes, Gemini's might learn 
Gemini might learn uh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that and sprinkle over here and a sprinkle over there. But Aquarius is like, no, I want a lot of this. I want a lot of this thing and I want a lot of that thing. And I want to explore everything through and through. Furthermore, Aquarius is a lot more observant and they are the humanitarian sign. So they're going to sit for hours just analyzing other people, assessing their quirks, assessing their mannerisms. But for Gemini, it's not so much uh, people that they are concerned about. They they will go whichever direction their inquisitive minds are taking them as they sort of laugh, <laughs> laugh to themselves with glee. <laughs> Yes, they do love to learn about people, but it's more, I'm just curious about this person or about this thing, so I'm going to go with it because it's fun and it's exciting and it's spontaneous. But with Aquarius, they just sit there, you know, fix, they'll just sit there more and just constantly oh, read into it more. Oh, what's the meaning of that? And I want to know more about that. Even when it comes into their learning strategies, Gemini is definitely a lot more able to go to many 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 sources many sources and pull things from here and here and here and here but with Aquarius yes they want to learn about it but they will more likely sit with say one or two articles in front of them and really go into that article and then take pieces from that article and like up a different thing to do with that article and it's going in more depth and whilst Gemini's are very restless Aquarius, Aquarians can be restless as well, but it's more whenever the sudden strike hits. It's just the sudden, oh, an unexpected thing just happened and so I'm going to go this way. Whereas Gemini's, it's just constant going this way and that way and changing directions. It's, it's completely fine for them. They're able to change, chop and change whenever. Whereas the Aquarius, it's, they'll be stagnant for a little bit. You know, this is the thing, this is what they're fixed on, but then boom, boom, it's quick. And then that's why they're both, they're both so unpredictable, they are. And whilst Gemini rules communication itself, Aquarius rules the very electricity that runs through the computers, through the phones, through the speakers for the world to communicate with one another. <laughs> and lastly, when it does come to relationships or friendships, I would say that Gemini is more prone to having more relationships and friends than Aquarius would be. Aquarians tend to really choose their friends very wisely, almost from birth. They're, they're really quite, I'd say they're a lot more cautious into who they do let into their friendship circle. But for Geminis, I think that this is something that they learn over time. All right, so now with all of the differences out of the way, let's look at the compatibility between these two signs. So looking at compa compatibility whenever they are in love, looking at sex, and also looking at anger. We've been best friends since I was five and he was six. We we actually grew up in the same neighbor neighborhood together. We used to do this thing where we would recite movie dialogues with one another. Uh, he just he just has this incredible memory. Though I do think I'm good at keeping him focused on the topic at hand and bringing him back into the room. <laughs> he does get distracted very, very easily, but don't get me wrong, so do I, so do I but not as much as him. <laughs> it came to really him starting high school. Uh, so he went to a different high school to me and he made so many friends there. He did try to bring me into his friend circle and whilst I am very good at speaking with new people, a lot of them, a lot of them I think don't take overly well to me. I don't think a lot of people know how to take me. They, they think I can be a bit strange, a bit weird. It's kind of hard for me to relate sometimes to people. Yeah, whilst he went out partying a lot, he would have partied a lot more than I did. I would just chill on my own. I just chill on my own. I like spending time on my own. Um, and yeah, I do like being around other people as well. And I would say that I get a lot of energy when I am around a lot of people. I do have a lot of friends. I have a lot of friends. It's just that I require more space. Some years did go by. So some years went by and both of us just went our own paths. But suddenly he contacts me through social media and he was living in New Jersey at the time and I was in New York. 
And that's how our connection really sparked up again. It's been one hell of a roller coaster ever since, but in a really good way. We grew up as best friends. Uh, we lost each other for a little bit, but now we're together and I, I love him. <laughs> he is my soulmate. He is my best friend. He just gets me more than anybody else and I understand him as well. I, I accept all of him and I trust him and he doesn't judge me for just being me. We are both very creative together as well actually, like the ideas and the creations that we can come up with, there are so so many. There are so many theories that we've been able to really formulate with one another. We're, we're just unstoppable, like our brains together, uh, like we could take over the world proper, probably, like pinky in the brain. <laughs> also enjoy variety definitely and we like to keep each other guessing a lot of the time. I like that about, about our relationship. It's the funniest thing like <laughs> whenever we're having a full like whenever we're having a full-blown debate in the middle of a restaurant or in the middle of the street there will be passers-by who just look at us really funny. You know one time actually one time I showed it shot it over to one of them and I was like do you not see? Do you not see that we are having a debate here? Arguing on the street isn't just something you see on the television, people. You know, actually, come to think of it, whenever we were kids, if we did ever have any arguments, we would just, you know, we'd just be there together, right? And what we would do is we would turn away from each other. So we just turn away from each other. I'd go this way and he'd go that way. And then slowly but surely, one of us would just go like this or he would like this and we can hear each other sort of um, moving in the background so we come together and then we just look at each other and be like ah and then we just start like hugging or laughing yeah that was our childhood we just couldn't be mad with one another for too long it was just uh, it was just the best time and I feel like that that's still what we do now of course we don't do this <laughs> but we're yeah we we don't we, we just don't hold grudges, basically. He is such a child at heart and I love that we can make up pretty quickly. What I really do admire about him though is that there's no pettiness. It's just very out in the open and I do love that he's free-spirited because I'm also free-spirited. These things, just, there's nothing ever left unsaid. We get full closure right there in the moment and that's it. We get the words out and we can move on. I have to tell you, I personally think that the physical sex to him alone does become pretty boring. I can tell that it's really through his intellect that gets him very excited. Um, he's actually told me many times that he appreciates my intelligence the most. He once grabbed my head, he once grabbed hold of my head and he kissed it and he was like, I love your brand, I love your brand. We don't even want to know about the phone sex we used to have. The phone sex we used to have whenever, um, whenever he was living in New Jersey. It was pretty great. It obviously doesn't compare to the actual sex that we have now. Yeah, I tried calling her so many times during high school. I, you know, I really wanted her. I really wanted her to come and join and hang out. So after a while, I guess, uh, we grew apart and that, that happens, right? But hey, it doesn't mean that I didn't stop thinking about her. We're able to talk for hours, talk for hours and we never get bored. And I do admire that she's able to detach from certain situations and look at it as if it was a other perspective. I do admire that she likes to remain neutral in situations, though she, at the same time, she does like to stick to her opinions on things. I try to tell her, look, 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 look. There doesn't always have to be some sort of fact, okay? And she just, she'll just not. I, I tell her this. There doesn't have to be a fact behind this, right? But she'll just go, mm -hmm, yeah, I know, I know. I know what's going on in her brain, I know. She's like thinking to herself, I know all, I know all, yes, but I'll listen anyway. Hey, maybe she does know more than I do, right? But I do know that she's a lot of fun. We like to travel together. We like to go clubbing together. We've even decorated our house together. That was so much fun. We just put on some music and 
played around, I threw paint on her, which after a while she didn't like so much. We once drove for 40 minutes to go to the special vegan ice cream joint because she's vegan. She's vegan, yeah, I know, society and just, yeah, activism. I'm not a vegan. But hey, I was willing to do it because we were able to talk on the ride over there. We were able to play some music. We were able to sing. I could just be a huge goofball whenever I'm with her. It's pretty cool. She's, she's a huge goofball too, so... We're just like big dorks with one another. We like to make funny videos together and like to do these uh, funny voices. First, first time I did it, right? She just looked at me and she was like, yes, yes, you're the one. I've written her songs actually before too. I've written her many songs. She has an amazing singing voice. So yeah, I've written her, um, I've written her songs for her to sing and one day we do hope to record with one another. She is very, very clever when it comes to getting what she wants. She has a way of being able to use her words in a partic just a particular way. But I know what's happening. I'm a highly observant person and very good at reading people. Okay? And I can certainly read her. But to be fair, I do try to pick my debates with her um, from time to time. Just to just out of sheer curiosity to, to get things going. It's great because it results in us both giving in and making sweet, sweet love to one another afterwards. Oh, she told you about that, did she? Yeah, yeah, we used to do that whenever we were kids. Yeah, I guess we still do that now, in some way. The R-rated version. I gotta admit though, it's usually me who capes first. What I do admire about her is the ability to, to really let other people be. You know, she's able to give other people space, she's able to give me space. To give both of us space in order to cool off if we're ever in an argument. Though I must admit, whenever we do have potential arguments, I try to post about her on my social media from time to time. I make these rant videos on my Instagram stories. Please don't tell her. Don't tell her. Best sex I've ever had, period. She's daring, she's experimental, she's liberating. She'll just suddenly pull a move on me and just leave me shocked. There is no knowing what she's gonna do next. It leaves me so curious. It leaves me really curious and I love that. Uh, she does have a pretty extreme idealism though when it comes to sex. Yeah, I can tell that. Yeah, I can tell that in her mind she's going places. It's like she's trying to sort of download how she wants me to pleasure her through the airwaves, maybe. Okay guys, so that concludes my video on Aquarius versus Gemini. Thank you kindly to my current subscribers for subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. And as well, if you would like to see more videos from me and you've not yet subscribed, then click the subscribe button. And I will be back with another video very, very soon.